So is there a way to, to really take this whole DNA story, at least DNA replication, and, and, and put it into the context of like 10 or 15 minutes? Let's give it a try. Let, let's DNA from the beginning all the way down to two DNA strands. Deep breath, let's go. All right, we know that DNA, by the work of many great scientists, is a double helix. We know that it is a double helix of molecules called nucleotides. Remember that there are four different nucleotides, two which we call purines. The purines are guanine and adenine. There's a way to remember this, and it also tells you a little bit about their structure. I like to remember it, and I tell my students to remember it as Puga 2. The purines are guanine and adenine, and they have a two-ring structure. Let's take a look at that two-ring structure now. Here you can see adenine with its two-ring structure, and this, and we might as well throw this in right now too. Adenine always bonds to the pyrimidine thymine. So let's talk about that. We also have pyrimidines. The pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine. Remember that adenine always bonds to thymine, so here's a purine-pyrimidine bond. How do they bond? Through hydrogen bonds. So far, so good. Let's take a look at the other part of PUGA2, guanine. Guanine, with its two-ring structure, always bonds to cytosine, okay? And once again, we have the, the um, purine-pyrimidine bond. So summary of the summary so far, what do we have? DNA is a double helix. It is consisting of nucleotides. There are four different nucleotides, uh, the two purines and the two pyrimidines. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. This isn't so bad, is it? Remember that each nucleotide contains a sugar called deoxyribose, thus the name deoxyribonucleic acid. Remember one more thing. There's a phosphate backbone holding this baby together, holding it in its helical structure. So DNA in a nutshell. All right, now that we have DNA in a nutshell, we have to ask the next question. How does DNA replicate? Well, it was known that DNA must replicate, Watson and Crick proposed this, by rupturing these, somehow, breaking these hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds between the G and C and the A and T. All right, that being said, how are we going to do that? Well, through a series of very clever experiments, it was found out that DNA replicates in what we call the semi-conservative manner. In other words, the, the strands open up, using a zipper analogy here, the strands will open up and each side will act as a template for the new side. So this side will act as a template for this side. Which brings us to this idea of the five prime side of DNA and the three prime side of DNA. Remember this, since it's a double helix and has two sides, we have to think of the following. If we look at the arrangements of the nucleotides, and here is, here is one nucleotide with its group, and we'll, we'll put another one right below that with its group, we have this side and let's remember to count our carbons. One, two, three, four, five. So this particular side has the five, the number five carbon facing upward, relatively speaking, and the three carbon, if you will, at the bottom of the strand. Well, that's irrelevant unless we look at the other side. And then we see the relevance of this whole idea of five and three. The other side, in order to bond properly, has to be anti parallel to this, which means that in this situation, the strands will run the opposite. So if we take a look at this, one, two, three, four, and here comes my phosphate group there, coming off of the number five carbon, this strand will run exactly in the opposite direction, if you will, as its counterpart on the other side of the DNA molecule. So let's take a look at this. If you look at this side, <clears throat> which side faces up? Up on my paper, if you will. Well, here we have the three side up. Here we have the five side up, running in this direction, 
five to three, running in this direction with the five down, three to five. This becomes very significant when we get to the idea of DNA replication because of the enzymes that are going to be involved, particularly the enzyme DNA polymerase. That particular enzyme only reads in one direction. Therefore, it can only read one side of these strands properly.